Welcome! I'm Stephen Davis with Hot Sour Sparkles. And I'm Robert Sanders. And this is TFQ, where we answer true or false statements about video games and movies. If we get the question wrong, we'll drink a shot. Okay, don't get the question wrong. Get it right. We'll not drink a shot of our hot sauce, lemon juice, or sparkle shot. So, Roberto. Yes. Today, what? I'm going to be doing a movie. What movie? What movie? Oh. What movie will we do? We are going to be doing a movie I've enjoyed since I was a little kid, Young Frankenstein. Young Frankenstein. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And your first question today of this awesome Mel Brooks movie is, the shifting hump on Igor's back was an ad-libbed gag of Marty Feldman's. I feel like I've seen this movie once yes. with you. Yeah. Probably. So good. So good. I yeah, remember most of it. Yeah. If any of it. Yeah. Last thing I remember seeing with Frankenstein was the new work. Oh, yeah. With uh, Danny Radcliffe and, yeah. and um, Professor X. Yeah. Um, that guy. I, yeah. I know his name. Yeah. I know what it is. You know, right now I don't know what it is. He's from Wanted. Yeah, he's, he's from several things. Yeah. Most famously now, Professor X. James McAvoy. There we go. Yeah, all right. So I had to say, and I had it. I was thinking of uh, dead that Deadpool line where he's like Patrick Stewart or James McAvoy. These timelines are so <laughs> convoluted. <laughs> yeah, we don't understand. No one understands. You know, it's all good. But it's yeah, so we're gonna say true. You gonna say true? It sounds fun. It sounds fun. Whether it is or not. Yeah, it is true. Yes. Yeah. Uh, apparently, he had been shifting it for days. And eventually the cast members noticed, so then they were like, <laughs> they were like, okay, we gotta write it into the movie now. <laughs> okay, are you ready for the next one? Yes, number two. Number two. The original cut of the movie was almost, uh, was almost twice as long as the final cut. Batman v Superman was almost six yes. times as long <laughs> before the final cut, where they cut most of the movie out. <laughs> and they, they announced afterwards, hey, we promise it's coming out on the ultimate Blu-ray. That's coming out soon, is it not? Yeah, it does. It does come out soon. Yeah. I feel like I need to see it. Yeah. It's getting a theatrical release. For a day. Yeah. I think not it, doing that. I think once they had one last week, and I think it's supposed to have one this coming week. Really? One yeah. each day. No interest. I'm not spending any more money in theaters on that. I, I agree. I agree. <laughs> I agree. But I feel like I need to see this, I did, this I did, extended I rated R cut. Um, let's see. I'm going to go with false on this one. I'm right. sure it was longer, but I don't know if it was twice. It's, it's, it's true. Yeah. Yeah. I figured it probably was. Yeah. Yeah, everyone considered it like a complete failure. Like, they, they said, like, I think they said for every joke that landed in that cut, there was three jokes that didn't work. So, <laughs> well. yeah. So there we go. All right. Mm -hmm. One, I figured it might be true. I should have answered true. At least it's that one. <laughs> no. Hmm. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> <coughs> well, yes. <laughs> the great news is gone. Yes. <laughs> Oh. And number three? three. three. Alright. Uh, the movie was originally going to feature Dracula, but was cut due to uh, making the filmmakers feel like that uh, it was going to distract from the Frankenstein story. Oh, that just seems... seems odd. Yeah. It, it seems... Well, it seems too odd. Yeah. It was the, it was, uh, let's see here. It was the inspiration that Mel Brooks had for the Dracula dead and loving it character that he later made into a movie. Liam Nielsen? Liam Neeson? Who was that guy? The old guy with the white hair from the Naked Gun movies. He was also in the scary movies. He played Dracula. You remember that movie? 
No, I do not. No? I don't no, think it's Liam Neeson funny. either. It's not Liam Neeson. Though, so I, was, I was like, it's not him. <laughs> it's like, it's the other guy. That was uh, Magoo. Yeah, I know the actor you're talking about. That would be about. pretty funny. Liam Neeson. It's... Nelson Neeson. It's, it's, it's close. It's, it's, th it's close. something like that. <laughs> Um, I don't remember his name. I don't know. I, I should know it. I can't. But you're it. right. It is similar. Yeah. But it's definitely not. I Liam always get it mixed up. <laughs> Liam Delson. I don't no. Know. Um. Ah, oh, I know his name. Yeah. Frustrating. I don't remember. Ah. Uh, well. Um. Uh, Robert. I just don't know. I don't know. I really don't want to pick that hot shot. <laughs> I really don't. I, I'll say false again. Yes, it is false. <sighs> Completely made that up. Okay, okay. Yeah. I mean, the the Dracula Dead Loving is the real movie. I know. I yeah. understand that's the real movie. I'm like, it just doesn't doesn't seem like that they would put him in that movie at all. <laughs> all right. Lucky you, man. Okay. It's lucky me. Number four. Uh, Gene Wilder was nearly crushed by a piece of falling uh, scientific equipment on the set. But nearly moved out of the way in time. Oh, that sounds like something that could be true. I could, I could believe that. Huh. Well, it is true, and I do not know. Gene Wilder's good, though. I like Gene Wilder. Yeah, he is good. Is he still alive? I guess he is. Yeah. Yeah. Is he still acting? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Maybe at the retirement home. Uh, he's old. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, hmm. You know what? I, it, sounds, it sounds good. Let's say true. Let's say true. That is false. Of course it is. Yes. Well, at least I, I like my lemon shots. <laughs> you do. <laughs> <laughs> better than the hot ones. <laughs> so much better. Make you pop there, too. <laughs> oh! Oh! Super sour. Super sour. Oh, I'm making that bad. <laughs> oh! Ugh. You prepared? Of course. All right, last well, final. one. Final question. In 1974, rock band Aerosmith took a break from a long night of recording to see the film. Steven Tyler wrote the band's hit Walk This Way the morning after seeing the movie because he was inspired by the scene in the movie where he said, Walk this way, this way. This is way out there. This is. This is <laughs> <laughs> now, this is like a super obscure, weird thing there. It's like, this could be completely made up, but it's so random that it could be true. It's a good song. Yeah. Walk this way. That's a good song. Aerosmith in general. Yeah. Yeah, I think they have a reunion tour. Yeah. Or something. I heard Steve that. Tyler's. Or like a farewell tour, I think it is. is I it? think they finally returned. I mean, he's, <laughs> he's had like four throat surgeries or something like that. I think so. He's old. He's very old. Yeah. Ah, mmm. Beautiful daughter. <laughs> yeah. She's very, very attractive. I, mm, I'm gonna have to. If you make this up, you do a darn good job at it, or some uh, some drastic element of this is true, I, I'm gonna have to say true. Just because how obscure it is, how much detail. And... It is true. Yes. It is true. Yes. <laughs> I thought that was crazy that a really popular song was actually yeah, based it's just after that. a line in the movie. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, they also were uh, Mel Brooks wanted to cut that scene out of the movie too <laughs> like he, he uh, felt like it was a, just a little too it just wasn't funny enough and they apparently hit it off in test screening so yeah, yeah. you keep the yeah definitely oh, so. definitely it's good enough for Aerosmith it's good enough for everybody else right mm. exactly <laughs> oh, okay I think I did alright I think I did pretty good I man I, I got to I I got three out of five. Yeah. It's not bad. Not bad. Let's have to see if I can beat it.